Hi guys! Hi there! Welcome back to our channel Make That Change. In this channel, Anna and I share our personal immigrant experience on how to arrive, excel and thrive in Canada. That's right. And today we're going to discuss how you should avoid spending money that you don't need to spend. In other words, we will discuss things to watch out for to avoid hidden costs and unjustified expenses. Canada is a very capitalistic society. In addition to the services that you already need and use, there's always a gazillion of different add-ons and promotions and services that you are made to pay for. Everyone is constantly trying to upsell you on services you don't really need or can do yourself. Some companies get away by adding small tiny fees into your monthly recurring bill so that you don't notice, and some charge you insane amounts of money for the simple tasks you could do yourself. For instance, Anastasia and I recently bought a new TV, and when buying the TV we were offered two options, to pay for delivery only or to pay twice as much for two guys to deliver this TV to our house and to set it up for us. Well, of course we chose the second option, for some additional reasons that we are not going to discuss in this video. And it turned out that two guys showed up at our doorstep, they delivered the TV, they did the unboxing, and they set the TV up on our TV unit. They switched the TV on and they allowed us to do the setup watching us go through it. We paid twice as much for something we could pretty much do ourselves. Moral of the story? Always know what you're paying for. All right, that is just one example of ridiculous fees that you have to pay that you don't have to pay for. But we cautiously went for it. But now, let's talk about some fees you might not even realize you're paying for. So before we talk about unwanted and hidden fees, as always, subscribe to our Facebook community if you want to connect to other newcomers in Canada, as well as subscribe to our weekly newsletter if you want to receive new set of updates about immigration, work and life in Canada. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start with insurance. So insurance is a sophisticated and a complex animal. In Canada, it's mandatory to have a car insurance. Moreover, this insurance has to cover third-party liability, as well as bodily injury and accident benefits. In other words, it's mandatory that your insurance covers the other party's damages in case of an accident, as well as your medical expenses in case of an injury. In addition to this, tenant insurance is mandatory in big cities like Toronto or Vancouver. In other words, you won't be able to rent an apartment if you don't show a proof of insurance. Now, what makes insurance so complex and annoying sometimes is various endorsements, add-ons and deductibles. Oftentimes, insurance companies include various endorsements in the quote by default. So, whenever you talk to insurance company, never settle down with the number you're given. Always ask if there are any endorsements or add-ons that can be removed. This will oftentimes shave 10 to 20 bucks off your quote monthly. Another tip for you guys is to always shop around before committing to one insurance company and just choose the company that offers the cheapest quote. Just call various companies and compare. Another thing to consider is bundling up your insurance. For example, if you're getting a car insurance and you're also required to get a tenant's re insurance, you can combine those together. It will help you to get a nice rebate as well. Oh, and one last thing, since we're all working remotely these days, don't tell your insurance company that you're using your car to commute to work. It will save you some money on your quote. Another type of sneaky services we'll talk about is telecommunication services. And we're bundling two things here internet and cable TV, as well as cell phone connection. Simply because most of the time these services are administered by same corporations. Telco services are not cheap in Canada, especially compared to Europe or Asia. According to globalnews.ca, an average Canadian pays around $100 for cell phone bills, and at least $120 if you bundle internet with cable TV. Internet alone will average up to $70. Exact prices will always depend on the province you live in, though. And what all of these telco companies oftentimes do is they charge you some extra fees on top of your basic services. 
things like installation and setup fees, equipment rental fees, recovery fees, and even cancellation fee. That's right, some providers will penalize you for wanting to cancel your contract before your initial contract expires. All those fees would typically range from just a couple of dollars monthly or up to 20 or $30 one-time charges. Charging these fees got so bad in Canada once that the largest telco provider in Canada, Bell, was once slapped with a 10 million dollar fine for doing just that. First, those fees are just ridiculous. I personally think that all of that should be part of your basic service already included into your monthly fee. And secondly, these fees are negotiable specifically because they shouldn't be there in the first place. We recommend that you always read the fine print in your contract, understand what you're paying, break down all the fees and ask for clarifications if needed, and always try to negotiate to waive some of the fees that you're not happy with. We also recommend to shop around for smaller providers because they oftentimes have some much nicer deals to offer. And once you've chosen the provider, be aware of their promotions. Many providers will try to lure you in by offering some amazing deals and promotions to your contract that's half price of what you would normally pay. But be mindful that these promotions expire eventually and then suddenly your bill doubles and there's no way for you to get out of that contract because, oh well, you have to pay cancellation fees. All that being said, please pay attention to your contract terms. Always read the fine print always shop around and always negotiate. Let's talk about restaurants. So tipping is usually a social norm. However, some disagree with that, saying that tipping should be mandatory in Canada. Well, that's the topic for another video. An average tipping expectation is about 15%. And this amount of money is usually added on top of the bill that is brought to you by a waiter. Some places, however, include the service surcharge in the bill by default. So always read your bill and look for service charge. This is another word for tips that are already included by default. The default service surcharge is oftentimes 18 or even 20%. And the most common situation to get the surcharge is when you're a part of a group of five or more people. In this case, restaurants force you to pay that tip. In cases like this, you don't have to pay any additional tip on top of that unless there is a cute waiter or waitress and you just want to say thank you. Speaking of checking your bill, always double check your bill and that all the items in that bill correspond to what you actually ordered. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon for waiters to punch two items instead of one or add in additional items that you didn't even order. And when your bill is long and you're tipsy by the end of the evening, it's a lot easier to miss one line of erroneous item on the bill. And the last thing we will discuss in this chapter is add-on items. Waiters will always be super nice and ask whether you want to have some extra guacamole on your nachos or a glass of sparkling water or extra garlic bread and they will sound very casual about it. But if you're on a budget, keep in mind that all those extras are always an extra charge. Another topic we want to cover here is bank fees. Everyone in Canada has a bank account. Anyone can open a bank account. And you need your bank account to get paid by your employer, to pay your bills, and to make some purchases. Unfortunately, there's oftentimes a fee associated with keeping your account simply open. And those fees typically range all the way between two to three dollars a month up to thirty dollars monthly. It really depends on what types of services are being offered in your bank account. You can always shop around different banks and get the costs down or even sometimes get the costs down to zero dollars, especially if you're willing to combine different bank accounts together. Accounts like RRSP for retirement savings, TFSA for savings accounts, credit cards accounts and other savings accounts. Some banks will even allow you to skip paying a monthly fee as long as you're able to keep a minimum balance on your bank account. In some cases, bundling different accounts or keeping the minimum balance in your account is not very favorable, especially if you're a newcomer and you need to use the cash that you already have on hand that's already short. Additionally, if you'd like to cut on paying the monthly fees, you'll likely have to remove some services your bank has to offer, which means that you'll have to be very mindful of the limits imposed on your account. Things like ATM withdrawals, monthly amounts of interact e-transfers, or just general transactions within your account. Most of them we have a limit for the amount of transactions you can make. 
And there is another very nasty fee, which is a paper bank statement fee. In short, just always opt in for e-statements. Save the trees, save the planet. In order to avoid paying the extra or extra high bank fees, always shop around, know what services you need, and read the fine print on your contract before you open a bank account. And when you transact on a monthly basis, be aware of your limits. Always opt in for electronic e-statements and don't overuse your bank account. And one last thing, always keep an eye out on the unwanted fees that the bank may suddenly decide to charge you. Or even worse, watch out for the fraudulent charges and make sure to report them to your bank immediately. Continuing on the theme of bank fees, we would also like to draw attention to credit card charges. We will not go into too much detail here, but we recommend you always make sure to pay your credit card on time, keep an eye on your transactions to watch out for fraud, and any funky fees you might get charged. And lastly, similarly to how telcos function, many banks try to lure you in with some amazing promotion deals with lower monthly fees for bank accounts or sometimes even zero monthly fees. Well, similarly to our advice with the telco companies, always keep an eye on when your promotion expires so that you know when you will be hit by a much larger fee. Or maybe be ready to simply change the bank or see what other promotions the bank is offering at that specific time. There is a ton of ways and places where we might be charged unwanted service fees. Or we simply can buy things that turn out to be a waste of money, just like our TV setup. And now it's your turn to share. What was the last thing you were charged for that turned out to be a complete nonsense? Or what kind of unwanted hidden fees you fell victim to? Please share your experience in the comments section below. Let's bring awareness to hidden and unjustified fees. And while you do that, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. This is gonna help us tremendously and will allow much more people to see this video. That's it for today, friends. See you in the next one. Ciao!